Do you use third-party code to empower your apps? What if there was a way to increase privacy and security for apps, SDKs, and users benefiting the entire Android ecosystem? Hi, I'm Zoe, and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer on the Privacy Sandbox team. In this video, you'll learn about the developer requirements for the SDK runtime, including why and how they're used. Let's recap the key concepts and terminology. The SDK runtime is a technology designed to safeguard user data and enhance SDK and app security by isolating third parties. It is available from Android 14 and higher, but there is backward compatibility support through Android Jetpack. Now, for the key terms, a runtime-enabled SDK, or a re-SDK, is an SDK that runs inside of the SDK runtime. In contrast, when an SDK runs inside of the app process but interacts with a runtime-enabled SDK, we call it a runtime-aware SDK, or RA for short. Another important component is the set of shim generation tools, or just the shim. These Jetpack libraries will help you abstract low-level IPC complexity as the SDK runtime platform APIs manage SDKs as binders. Finally, the Android SDK bundle, or ASB, is the publication format that makes distributing SDKs in a standalone manner possible. As the SDK runtime is available starting Android 14, you'll need at least API level 34. Lower API levels will still work, but in backward compatible mode. If you want to develop a runtime-enabled SDK, you will have to do so on Android Studio Preview. Specifically, you need to use Ladybug Canary 1 or later, which is needed to access AGP 870 Alpha 1. This includes a backward compatibility fix connected to Kotlin coroutines. Backward compatibility, as well as shim generation, are enabled through a set of Android Jetpack libraries. Before listing these libraries, let's take a step back to understand the role. The SDK runtime introduces new entities to assist with inter-process communication. The SDK manager, used from the apps process, and the SDK controller, used within the runtime. Let's focus on app-to-SDK communication. The SDK Manager, or SDK Sandbox Manager Compat, is a static class that provides APIs to load and interact with runtime-enabled SDKs. By the way, see that Compat ending? You need to use entities with the Compat ending to make sure that it's all backward compatible by default, automatically. Whenever an app wants to load an RE SDK, it can use the load SDK functionality in the runtime manager. The manager will load this SDK and return it as a binder. This poses two questions. One, how does the manager know a specific RE SDK to load it? And two, it's returned as a binder? Doesn't that make things quite complex? Answering these questions, can help put tooling requirements in perspective. So, how does the manager know an SDK to operate with it? It's simple, it doesn't. Or not this runtime-enabled SDK specifically, but rather the runtime manager knows that all RE SDKs will extend the SDK provider, an abstract class, which is actually called Sandbox SDK Provider Compat, that provides the functionality needed. So what does this mean for SDK developers? Basically, it means that your SDK has to extend SDK provider. We will talk more about this in the episode dedicated to building RE SDKs. Now, for the second question, as a binder? Binders are great. They are one of the main blocks for IPC design with benefits in memory management and safety but using them directly would introduce design complexities and require asking you to build a significant amount of boilerplate code. The solution, the shim, that is the shim generation libraries. This is the low level app SDK or SDK SDK IPC complexity that the shim is here to abstract. How does it do that? In two ways, one, 
On the ARI SDK, the shim libraries provide annotations so that SDKs can define their API, and they generate a bespoke SDK provider. Two, on the RA SDK, they create the mechanism to turn this binder into the actual SDK's interface. And the best part of this, this process is handled at compile time, transparently for you. This is thanks to AGP integration with the Gradle Privacy Sandbox plugin and the Jetpack libraries that you are now ready to hear about. These Jetpack libraries are all part of the Privacy Sandbox space in Jetpack. Tools offers access to the shim. The RE SDK should depend on tools and API compiler. The RA SDK or app on API generation. All of the compat versions of the SDK runtime entities that make backward compatibility work will be in SDK runtime. Then, depending on whether you're using remote UI, activities, or both, you will depend on the UI and activity libraries. SDK runtime, UI, and activity all have a core component shared across the board, a client component required in the app or RA SDK, and a provider component for the RE SDK. Now, you have everything you need to start developing for the SDK runtime. To accelerate your journey, check out the Privacy Sandbox developer site. You'll find code samples, the SDK development guide, the latest announcements, technical documentation, and channels for feedback. Thanks for watching. Watch the other episodes in this video series to learn more about how to build, consume, and test SDKs in the runtime.